Well, there comes a time in every young man's life when he needs to uh, step outside of his comfort zone, should you say. Get himself a little bit scared, um, a little bit excited, go through the motions of anxiety and worry and waking up four times during the night, wondering if you're going to miss the rendezvous at the boat ramp. Well, today's that day, my friends. I'm doing a reef trip, but I'm going overnight. Um, yeah, I'm going to meet a few lads out there, uh, but I'm still going to do the 60k plus run on my own in my boat. And um, I didn't really design or get this boat to sleep out of it. I think the biggest thing worrying me is just the size of this boat. I know a lot of people do it in smaller boats, so I should be alright, but I'll tell you what, I feel a lot more confident in an 8 metre jobby. <laughs> but I've managed to um, figure out how to fit my single swag across the back. And then I'm going to fish myself all day around the reef and then meet up with a crew of lads in their boats and raft up for a few beers and a, a few um, last wasabi in Fitzroy Lagoon. So, anyway, strap yourself in. I'm not sure what to expect out of this one. waters we're going all the way up here I'm gonna fish Lamont Reef and Fitzroy and then meet the crew in Fitzroy the Sarbo but it's about a 42k nautical no 42 nautical mile run from here to here hopefully it's not too choppy the sun's only come up about 20 minutes ago it's not super glassy but I think we'll still get there, it just might take a little bit longer. It's about that extra metre or two of boat would come in very handy. It's not the best conditions to be doing 70k's out here. It's not the worst either. Whoa. Just about a <laughs> Spotted some birds on the way out, so we're just throwing a bit of a stick bait so we can get a bit of a little tuna or a bonito or something. A fresh bait, first cast, mate. I'll tell you what, it's been a long haul. We've done 30 k's, about 60 to off, probably 50 to go. Little bonito! Have a look at that one. I'll tell you what, if you're hard up, they go right on the barbecue too. Hot tip. Ooh, hey. Well, I'll tell you what, what's the time? <laughs> it's 7.30. So it's been a two hour run. Done 66.3 k's. We're just coming up on a reef called Lamont Reef, which is like the next one north from Fitzroy. So tonight we're pulling up in Fitzroy in the lagoon. So I don't want to fish too far away because it's going to get a bit windy, the Savo. And then you're pretty protected. And it's only about a 5k run, I think, from Lamont to Fitzroy. I'm a little bit green around the gills after that mission, man. I'll tell you what, though, I'm impressed with the yammy. The old 130, we go, oh, we sat anywhere between 30 and 40 k's an hour all the way over in a metre of slop, blowing about 12 knots southerly. I'm still dry, all my gear's still dry, didn't get belted around too much, so pretty stoked though. Eh? Um, here we are, here is Lamont. I've got a heap of marks around here. If you're watching Glen Owen Scotty, thanks. <laughs> Had these marks for ages, I've never been out here, but I'll go through the stats on my gauges. I always like watching these, eh? So we've used 30.5 litres of fuel to do our 66 Ks. So what's that? Just over two litres uh, per kilometre. That's sitting anywhere between 3,600 and 4,000 RPM. Loves that rev range, eh? Just cruises, uses no fuel. 4,000 RPM, you're doing about 40 Ks an hour. But um, in that slop, you sort of had to back off to around 35, was comfortable, but... All right, 
I need to go and tuck out behind this reef, get out of this lumpiness for a while, get something in my guts, and then find some fish. How's the water, mate? Look at that. Oh, that's just epic. <laughs> So this is what they call the Mont Reef, so you can see the little breakers out here. I'm not sure if that gets dry at all on a real low tide, but it's just like a, a big reef out in the middle here. There's no island on it, there's no lagoon on it, but you can just fish the outskirts of it and there's coral everywhere. There's a couple of bombies further off. There's heaps of bait and stuff, so, oh. I think I'm just gonna start here, man. I'm gonna deploy the Alecky and just float around throwing plastics and and vibes and stuff just see what happens oh it's dolphins up here look at this <laughs> this is just amazing down she goes every time i come out here i am just blown away by the wildlife like if it's not turtles then it's dolphins if it's not dolphins it's whales and if it's not whales it's manta rays so every time i'm expecting something fantastic and uh the reef never disappoints mate today the dolphins were on point and uh what a way to see them drifting over lamont reef right before smacking into a few good fish i am going to use a soft plastic squid i'm going to hop it over these reef flats here and hopefully get some well trout's the big the one i want but anything just anything i've got a squid jig on the ready too so if i see any squid flick that out i'd be happy to bag a heap of squid eh? god i love it first fish hey little red cod caught three fish today three of these anyway the old D hooker in action again it's that good mate just hoping that if I'm catching them I'm in the right ground for trout as well big trout big trout I'm gonna fish here for a while I've got the bottom I'm gonna fish these flats for a bit let my bait defrost. Here we go and drop some bottom baits on this bommy I've got like, I don't know, 500 meters off this reef here. We'll go and find some fish and just try and fill the esky with a few fillets. Come on, trouty, trouty, trouty. Ooh. The better bite, got a bit of a thump. Yep, there he is, one of the boat. Oh. A bit better colour. No. <laughs> oh. Number five. Same fish. Are you following me, mate? Oh, All yeah. right. Imagine if those five fish were trout. I'd be stoked. Oh, next cast. There's a better fish. Okay. Might be what we're after. Get up. Oh, it's looking like a better colour. I think it's a trout. I think it's a trout. Yep. Oh, it's a good trout too. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. Hang on a sec. I want to show you this. Spot lock that. Beep. Hey, trouty, trouty. Trouty, trouty. Yeah. Happy days. Hey, he's a keeper. That's a good fish, man. Get this out of his scope. I knew they'd work. This thing here, look at that. That's a little squid. It's called a vamp squid from Redemption Tackle. I've had a heap in my tackle box since WA. And they, I've got little versions and everything. But these big ones with an ounce jig head in them, they work wicked over the flats, eh? If you lose a few, who cares, hey? It's not like losing a $30 vibe. Oh, all right. Bleed him up. That's getting me pumped. Number one for the day. I wonder if we can get a few more. Hang on. 
Need to see some sunshine on this fella. Ah, look at the colours on him. Yeah. Good fish. Ah, hang on, ready? One for the thumbnail. Ka-chink, ka-chink. <laughs> yeah, so good. All right, so what I do with all my fish, I bleed them straight away. Um, I've got my live bait tank at the back. If they're not too big, I just cut their throats and stick them head first down in the tank there, let them bleed out for a while before I put them on ice. I've got these things, they're black panthers. They're, I've had these since I worked in the mines. You can get these long, long scissored versions of them. They're stainless snips. They're great for cutting throats because you just literally cut it straight in there, shink, and that's it. No stuffing around with a knife, just snap straight in the tub and then uh, get back into fishing. Yeah. And then when I get on the move, I can just drop me um, the bung out of the bait tank and put the, the pump on. It pumps all the blood and stuff out while you're on the move. Then it's fresh for the next spot. Once I've let them bleed out in the tub for a while, um, I just put them straight on ice. I reckon the quicker you can get a fish on ice, the better. After they bleed out anyway. That's just my opinion. Get the lip grips back on him, give him a swim to get the blood and stuff out, and then throw him in the esky. Benito! Caught this little Benito on the way out, on a slug. Probably could have stopped and caught more, but it's pretty rough and I'm starting to feel pretty ill. <laughs> I'm not good when I have to stop the fish in slop. But I'm about to move uh, just off the flats here and go out to a couple of bombies or a few marks just off the mont. And I'm just gonna do up some strip baits of this stuff. Nice, fresh strip baits. Oh, look at this. Just sharpen his eyes before I left too, so it's awesome. Boom, nice fillet of that. I'm just gonna run it down the middle. I've got this thing that Adam gave me from out of line. I don't know where he got it, but I know it was called a, a berserker rig. It's just a set of gangs with a bit of fluff on it. And they've got swivels all between them and that, so. All right, I'm gonna drop that down. As soon as I get out to my little spot, find the fish, uh, spot lock on them and then just drop this beautiful big fillet of bonito straight on its head. Where'd it go? Hey, well, here we go, I'll show you. I'm gonna pick it up. Same as we've always done at campsites and when we're traveling in the van. If you see any rubbish out when you're boating, just pick it up. Like, it's not hard, eh? It's good karma, I reckon. Might catch some more fish. Only takes probably 30 seconds to turn around and grab some rubbish especially like this is plastic and then I reckon every five minutes I see a big turtle come up you know you see them shows with turtles eat plastic bags and stuff because they think they're jellyfish or something so I'm just gonna pick it up in my net if I can get us alongside it I tell you what you wouldn't want to be um, stuck in the water with me trying to pick you up Hey. Maybe you would, if you're a bit of plastic. Frozen chicken, skinless, boneless breast. It's going in my bin. I'll show you my little bin, actually. Have a look at this. I'll knock it out of gear. Oh, oh do you ever remember me showing you the um, stone guard buddies, the, the storage bags I've got on the stone guard on my caravan? Look at this. I mounted one between the poles on my bait board. It's me bin. How good's that? Sick how, eh? <laughs> this is a new model too, so it's like all PVC and that. It'd be awesome for the boat. Water, sort of waterproof. Not if you sink it, but it's gonna be spray proof, so you can keep other gear in there. Anyway, I'll give you a look at this side. Goes all right, eh? Oh, I like it. I've got two on the stone guard of the van, and one goes there, and I reckon I could mount another one on the front of the console or something. But... Have you ever seen relief shading on the garments? Shows you all the contours and that. Like, look at this. Come in here, there's like a lump on the ground, a little pinnacle. So I would not know how to find that. There's no mark on it, but because you've got relief shading, you can go and check it out with your sound. Now, see that? Shows you all the contours of the bottom. Pretty good, eh? On the, that's a 12 inch garment. 
does everything I need. Can you zoom in on this? We'll go and find it. Okay, I had to buy that card. You buy like an SD card uh, that you can get the maps or the license. So it's like another 300 bucks, I think. And you plug it in, but then you can download relief shading for wherever you want. And um, if you go into new areas, it's gold, mate. Because it's pretty much blokes that are giving me heaps of marks and stuff. You go out to the marks, and now I've got relief shading. The marks are pretty much on what you can see on the bottom on relief shading. So it's pretty crazy, eh? I'm, um, I'm only just getting into it, but I love it. Let's see if I can show you as we roll up on this little pinnacle here. We should see it come up on the sounder on this side. So this is my sonar on one side, this is my maps on the other. So as we get there, it should go from 38. I'm guessing it should rise at least a few meters by the look of that. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look on the bottom there. This is where we're coming to that little lump. It's jumped up like five or six meters. 38 to 32, six meter little lump up in the pinnacle. Oh yeah, yeah. A bit of fuzz on it down the bottom there. All right, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna mark it. Oh, that's a good looking lump. Look at that. Oh yeah, all right. I'm gonna spot lock on top of that. Hit the anchor mode. Beep. Gonna drop a bait right there. Far out, think off wind. I'll tell you what, it's in 40 meters of water and it's a fair bit of run, so I'm putting a number number 10 snapper lead on with this berserker rig. Well look at that bottom, I reckon we should get pumped straight up. Hook something on him, but I don't know what it is. A bit of weight in it. Oh, this might be a tusky. What the hell is that? Oh. Like that. Ah, you ever seen one of them before? You ripper. It goes all right, eh? Ah, thank you. You're going in the esky, mate. Well, listen, I'm not going to complain. Have you ever eaten hassa? They are probably one of the best eating fish. And that's a good one. Look at that. Oh. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, I told you I wanted to get fillets for the esky. Let's keep loading up on them. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, he's got a bit more weight in him, this one. Come on, son, up and get This feels a bit trouty. A bit trouty, trouty. Oh. Get up, get up, get up. Still fighting all the way up. Oh, what is that? It's a red emperor. A red emperor. What? I'm pretty sure he's going to be undersized, but I'll measure him quickly. Hang on. How yeah, pretty are they? Huh? She's like fight hard. I'd love to get a big one. They got to be um, they got to be 55 centimeters. So, I'm pretty sure he's probably going to be 53 or something like that. He's only just over 40. Jeez, they go hard. I don't want to get shark like the last one. Uh, come on. Uh, oh, it's big. Oh, the shark on it. Get up. Uh, no. 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 Oh, it's red. Oh. Oh, I think I just caught a legal red emperor. What the far out? Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, that's going legal. Oh. Oh. How good is that? Oh. Bring him over here in case I drop him. Oh. Yeah, have a look at that. Ah, oh, that's my first legal red emperor. I'll throw him on the mat. 
Yeah. And not by much. He's only gone 57. Have a look. Wow. What a fish. And it's only 57 centimetres. Oh. <laughs> happy? Yeah. I'm happy. Eww. Red, baby. That's the colour of happiness right there. Giddy up. <laughs> oh, I'm too, clo too slow on the button. Have a look at this. What colour is that, my friends? It's the colour of trout. It's the colour of success. <laughs> it's the colour of freaking happiness. Oh, man. That's another doozy. Take that. I will take that. Oh, look at that. How's the colours on them? Oh, mate, if you didn't have teeth like that, I'd kiss you. Look at it. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Finally, catching some fish. Ah, this is good, eh? This is so good. That trout was on a wing of the Bonito, so. Geez, I wish I caught more of them on the way over. Let's see if we can get this one on camera. Every time it's hitting the bottom, it's going off, so. All right. Let's see. Get down there, son. Here we go. Before the sharks do. Oh, another red. Yep. <laughs> I got no words. He's about the same size. Look at that. Legal 57. Oh. The Red King. <laughs> it's another nice trout. It's a different sort, that one. I think that might be a coronation trout. Happy days. Well, I reckon that deserves a beer or a rum. I can't decide. I don't know what it warrants. I've got two trout, two red emperor, a heap of hussar, a Maori wrasse. Mate, I'm killing it and it's 11 o'clock. I don't know whether to have a giddy up or a bundy. I can't believe I've got two red emperor. What the hell? I've caught like 50 of them out here and they've all been like 40 to 50 centimeters. Nothing's been legal. Can you imagine them ones they get that are like, how hard they'd go. Oh, I'm going to have to do it. No better time to have one of these. I still need brekkie. Actually, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't film it because I was a little bit embarrassed, but I actually spewed up my breakfast when I got out here. I was seasick. Far out. <laughs> I don't feel sick anymore. Whew. Giddy up. Oh, celebrate the awesomeness. All right, hey, um, I've got enough fish now. I'm just gonna troll from where I am over to where I'm meeting the rest of the lads at Fitzroy. Troll the deep edges, hopefully get a Mackie. I'd love to get a Spanish. Um, or you could even pick up a trout or something else to troll along these edges. But um, yeah, that's all I want. I don't want a GT. And I can't be bothered catching GTs. They rip your arms off and then you don't even want to keep them for dinner. So, but I suppose it'd be pretty fun. Anyway, Spanish. I'm gonna hook up a Halco Laser Pro and troll that. The old faithful's going on. Look at that. The old Halco Laser Pro. This one's a six meter diver because we're in 40 meters of water on this current line. So, come on. Spaniard. Love a good Spaniard. Hey, this is a serious question. How fast do you troll your Mackie lures? I 
know I mind about eight to ten k's an hour, but I'm no, I've never been that great at catching mackerel. I've caught a few, but I just don't know if I should be going faster. I don't think I should be going slower. Anyway, let me know. Comments. No good on the troll. A bit of a bust up out in front of me here, so I'm just going to throw this little slug at it. Gun, gun, whatever it is. Right, yeah, we're right in there. Oh, we're right in there. Got to get on there. Yep. Straight on here. <laughs> It's not a huge fish. Oh, I dropped that. Oh, there's another one. That's a better fish. Oh, that's a better fish. Holy hell. <laughs> oh, it's not even that big of a fish, man, eh? It's just going nuts. Let's see if I can just lift him over the side, I reckon. Hey. Little Mac tuna. Have a look at him. Things they go hard, don't they? You ever seen the tuna dance? Ready? Oh, he's not big enough to do it. <laughs> you see folks hold big tuna. And they just start going, bah. I think that's a big bonito to tell you the truth. Be good bait anyway. Good fun, man. Good fun. Oh, there's the tuna dance. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> anyway, he's throwing blood everywhere. I'm gonna keep him for strip baits because that's what worked awesome before. That was on that little nomad slug. Looks like a pilchard, doesn't it? I like it. Have a look at this. Here's a shark for you. Can you see him? I just let me bait tank out with all the bit of burly and stuff in there. And look at him, you can obviously smell it. He's come sniffing around. Wow. Big shark, man. Throw a fish, ready? Anyways, that's Fitzroy in the background. I'm gonna go and pull up just in the, on the outside of the reef, have a bit of lunch. Today on the menu is a pre-made toasted sanger, ham and cheese, that's going in the cooker. Flap that down. A bit of pineapple, I'll cut up at home. And a few chunks of that. Mm. Gonna wash it all down with a fresh cold one. Oh, I'm feeling heaps better now. I don't think I'll spew this one up. Oh. Yum. Oh, it's 2.42 and I might call it a day. I might go and uh, pull up in the lagoon, have a few beers for the Arvo and get some dinner ready. So anyway, I'll throw the drone up when I'm in there and just um, show you the Fitzroy Lagoon and a bit of a raft up with the other lads. And until then, until tomorrow morning. But now uh, if the weather's good, I might try and smack a few more fish on the way home. It's been a good trip. Coming into Fitzroy Lagoon is just off its head from a drone. Right, as I come into Fitzroy, I'll give you a little bit of info about it. So it can only be accessed via these two little natural channels that go through the reef edge. And it's the largest reef in the bunker group. So it's 3,650 hectares. And uh, they call it a drying, a closed ring reef. Now it's got a, a big lagoon inside, so it's an awesome anchorage. There's a few mooring buoys scattered throughout as well. And it can get to about 10 meters deep in some sections. So always a few boats out there, a few sailboats and other fishermen perfect spot to pull up for a night and uh, escape the weather. Righto, we're into Fitzroy. I think that's pretty done for the day. I'll we'll chill out and have a couple of bevies. Let's sort these fish out. Well, that's where I'm gonna leave this episode, mate. Small boat, big ocean, been a cracker of a day. I learned a lot, gained a lot of confidence by doing it on my own. Uh, and I'll be doing a few more, I reckon. I'll just have to check 
the weather apps and uh, get a good window where it's not blowing over 15 knots because it does get quite lumpy and uncomfortable in my little tinny. But rafted up in Fitzroy for the night, absolute crack away to finish the day. A few beers, a few rums, we all cooked up a bit of fish on the back deck of uh, Mitchie's boat, which is a big one in the middle. It's an old pro boat, I think it's an old 40 foot cray vessel that he's turned into a bit of a liverboard adventure rig and uh yeah we can easily throw a few fenders over the side and we raft up and this is how we spent the night here so i was going to show you where i put the swag in my boat but um mitch had a bit of spare space on the deck of his 40 foot rig so i ended up throwing my swag on that uh, so it's a bit more stable not rocking around in my little tinny on the side there but check this out mate what a way to finish the day sunset good mates good beers good laughs an esky full of fish and uh plenty of cold beers don't worry about that until next time enjoy guys stay safe